Hi and welcome to part four. In this video, I'll show you how I painted and applied the weathering to the spare tracks and tools, and then we'll see how far we get along with the model. First up, I'm gonna paint the spare tracks on the side of the turret. I used a life color set for this, which comes with four rust colors and two dust colors. The first one I used was life color, rust, dark shade, and picked out three of the tracks. This paint can be easily thinned with water, so you can even turn it into a wash, as I probably will later. The other two tracks I then painted in life colour, rust base colour, which is a slightly different tone, just to vary the look of the tracks on the turret. Also painting the ones on the opposite side of the turret and on the front of the vehicle. To speed up the drying process, you can use a hairdryer, but on a low setting. Now taking some Life Colour Rust Light Shadow 1, I then thinned it with some normal tap water, made a wash and just applied this to the spare track. Once this had dried after about five or 10 minutes, I then used Rust Light Shadow 2 just to make a lighter tone of rust and again applied this over the spare track where I wanted to give an effect of more recent rust. Here you can see the different tones and it started to dry and it's quite effective with its various tones. When doing something like this, keep the tracks on their side so the paint dries. If you stand it up, the paint will run to the bottom and will ruin the effect. To add an even lighter shade of rust, I now use Life Colour Dust Type 1 and mix this with the original rust colours. And again, just dab this on and then blend it with some water. Then taking some oil brusher, dark brown, I now thinned this with some enamel thinners, added the odd little dark dot, and just blended this in, just to add another varying color to the tracks. To add some light dust runs, I took some 502 Abtalum light sand, dotted these around the vehicle, on the side skirts, the turret roof, and the front mud guards. Dotted these on as I said and then blended it with a soft brush and some enamel thinners as I did for the dark runs but you must let the dark runs dry if you start using this thinner over the top you're going to remove the dark runs it needs to dry. Here you can see all the dust streaks and effects now. These need to dry before doing any painting over the top of these. As I said before, you don't want to ruin the effect. For Leo, German Grey was now used to base coat the tools, tow rope and track cable. If you get any of the paint on the model or you don't want it, just use some Vallejo airbrush cleaner and just brush it away.
Here you can see the effect of the base colour on the tools and the tow rope and track cable. It just gives a good darker colour and then you start highlighting it as we go. Taking some Vallejo white, I mix this with the German grey and some tap water and start blending it onto the metal parts of the tool, getting lighter around the edges. Keep the brush moving and then you won't get any tide marks. To get a really worn look to the tools, in this case a spade, just add more and more white to the grey colour and blend it and build it up around the edges where the paint would be scraped away as it's going into the ground etc. And here you can see the effect of several layers, keeping it light on the edges. Here you can see the effects on the eyes of the track cable, and on the head, and the bottom of the handles of the wire cutters, and on, I believe, the crank starting handle. To give a hint of various rust to the track cables, which do pick up a little bit, as well as the tools, I use some ammo MIG streaking rust effects, and track wash. Thin these with enamel thinners and applied it to the tracks and applied this to the track cable, the tow cable and then thinned it heavily and applied it to the metal parts of the tool. I also use this enamel wash on the spare tracks on the front. I'm not using it on every one, as I want the odd one to stand out a little. You can see the wash to good effect on all the cables and the tracks at the front of the vehicle. Once the cables and the tools were done, I now use these washes on the tracks on both sides of the turret. You must let the previous effects dry before going on to the next stage. For this I use some 502 Absalom Buff Thin this with some enamel thinners and let it flow onto all the cables. Now using this paint and some thinner, I now added dust to the spare tracks on the front of the hole, the front mud guards, machine gun and anywhere else that you think dust might accumulate. I just feather out the edges with the soft brush and some thinner just so there's no tide marks and no uh, like demarcation line between where the dust starts and ends. I'll let the pictures speak for themselves. Just watch how I'm adding the dust. Maybe putting a little bit more dust here and there. As I said, once the colour's been laid in, just get a soft brush and feather out the edges as you don't want that demarcation line between the dust and the colours on the model.
When applying dust, think about the environment and where the vehicle's been operating. As I said a second ago, think about where all the dust is going to accumulate, like on the spare tracks. around the hatches. And on the top of the gun and anywhere else. Remember the fixtures and fittings on the vehicle will also accumulate dust if they've been on there for quite a while. Here I'm adding some dust around the aerial mount. And on the tools, adding a little bit of the paint and then just blending it away. And here's the dust effects finished until I decide to add a few more. Now it's time to move on to the wooden part of the tools. For this I use Ammo by MIG old wood which is a nice acrylic colour and again it can be thinned with water I just paint it onto the wooden shafts of all the handles. Here you can see me painting the shaft of the track hammer or mallet. If you have trouble with painting things like this you can slide a bit of card underneath it so the paint doesn't actually touch the model. Now taking some Vallejo flat brown and mixing this with the old wood, I now painted the handles of the wire cutters. These were made from a Bakelite material, so I had different shades on. They weren't wood, as you see on some people's models, they were Bakelite. And here I am just painting them and adding a lighter shade in the middle of the handle. Now using some Vallejo German grey, I now paint the retaining straps that hold the jack block together. Here you can see all the tools now painted and the straps around the jack block as well as the handles on the wire cut. To add the grain effect to the tools on the wooden part of the handles I tend to use two colours and these are oil brusher dark brown and starship base sludge. I put the oil brusher dark brown in and around the clasps and maybe at the heads of the tools and then add the starship base sludge to this and then blend it backwards and forwards adding a grain using a soft dry brush. I may use a cotton bud or q-tip depending where you're from just to add a little wear to the tool shaft while rubbing it along and removing some of the paint. As I said start with a dark brown blend that out and now add the starship base sludge and blend that Then use the cotton bud. Now to paint the jack block I use Starship Base Sludge first. Painted this down each side where the bands go around the jack block. Then painted in the grain between the blocks that held together. Then using a flat dry brush, went backwards and forwards to pick up the grain. Then using the dark brown colour, went over this and again added the grain. Any paint that's on the bands or on the central retaining clasp, I just used a brush dipped in some thinner 
and remove the paint. And then actually use the paintbrush with some thinner on it, just to add a few highlights into the grain on the jack block. And here you can see it finished. Note all the other effects on the front of the vehicle and how it all starts working together. The barrel cleaning rods were next. I try to vary each one so it has a slightly different colour. So I might add more dark brown to one than the other and then blend with a dry soft brush to remove some of the paint and again use a cotton bud to add more wet. And here's the tools done. To get a grimy look where the crew's hands have been around the hatches, etc., I used some Starship Bay sludge, painted this around the edge. Then using a dry soft brush, just blend it in. You can add a little thinner, but you might ruin the effect, so be careful here. Here you can see the effect of the grime around the hatches and the dust. It is subtle, but it does make it stand out. To paint the faces of the periscopes, once they've been painted black, I then use some Tamiya clear green. Paint this over in several layers over the glass and it gives quite a good effect. This is another show where you can see the effect of the green over the black base coat on the periscopes. To paint the rear convoy light, I used some Vallejo black, painted the convoy light, and then once again using the Tamiya clear green, just layered a few coats of this over the top of it, just to give it that green sheen. Now to add some spillages of oil and fuel to the rear deck, I use some Absalom engine grease. Mix this with some thinners. First off, I line around the rear engine hatches. Then add the spillages. You can thin this out slightly more to make the spills look older. Don't forget vehicles aren't always refueled or watered on level ground so you might get spillages run down the side of the vehicle as I'm doing here. Then I'll also use it to accentuate some of the weld seams. Now that the weld seams are done I'll use the paint thinned again just to add a few more shadows and stains all around the vehicle. It's a great paint to use. Now using a flat brush cocktail stick and with the paint thinned again, I'll just add some speck into the running gear and the lower hull just to add another point of interest. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, it's free. Tell your mates. Speak to you on the next one.